Joe from Minerva. Today I am here to do a sew along for Simplicity 1566. That's this baby wardrobe. I'm going to be making View D, which is the uh, little baby romper. It's got button tab tops and a closure on the crotch so that you can change nappies. But it's a really great pattern for styling a whole baby wardrobe. A word about sizing, the pattern goes from one to three months, uh, six months is small, medium is 12 months and large is 18 months for all of those designs. Rather than go through um, the items that I'm going to use at the beginning of the tutorial, there are some decisions to be made, so there's some choices to make. So here underneath, are all the products that I use and all the things that I mention and then at, by the end of the video you'll know which technique you're going to select and what products you will need. If you hover over one of the items it can say add to basket and it adds all items to the basket and then you can select the things that you need. The fabric I've chosen today is a baby cord. It's really really smooth and it's you can tell it's a baby cord because it's quite difficult to even show the cord whales on there so it's really soft it's not thick and chunky and it's fine so if your baby's sitting down in a pram for a long time it's not too thick it folds up nicely this is quite a bright pink but obviously if you're doing a different gender you could choose a different color I'm gonna try little pink baby grow and show you some of the techniques. The first thing we need to do is to think about how we're going to cut out, especially because we're using cord. Time to move over to the cutting table. I'm going to show you how the pieces fit onto the fabric. Okay, this is the cord and at the moment the lines, the cord lines are running vertically down this fabric and when I press this way it's rough and when I press this way it's smooth like a mole or a mouse so I need to make sure that when you're wearing it the smoothness pushes down your body if you start to switch the fabrics around you'll find you'll get a different colour so this will look darker than this here and because that and that's because the whales are going in a different direction so when you're cutting out you can't switch some of your pattern pieces around you need to make sure that everything is heading in the same direction on the pattern pieces it's quite nice that um, not all the sizes are completely nested into one so on this one we've got extra extra small small and large and then there's another piece for this back which is the medium so you're not trying to really follow a cutting line that's all smudged into a load of other lines here so you need to make sure that you choose your size you cut it out and then you need a front a back a front facing back facing and facing into facing so this is a woven one it's nice and light you don't want something stiff for a small baby toddler this is um, woven so it's very fluid it moves more than the um, synthetic ones but it's still iron on so the pattern has Four pieces. You can trace off the pattern pieces in different sizes if you know that you're going to be consistently making for this particular toddler or you can use this little technique here which is to snip, snip and fold so that's just giving me the crotch curve for the large but then the crotch curve pieces are still there for small and extra small they're just all folded down. You need to cut all the notches so I I make little snips in but you might want to mark with a chalk 
you might want to just put a single snip or you can have little arrows pointing up and the first part of the pattern is to apply the interfacing to the facing pieces. There are a few things to mention before you take an iron to baby cord. So I've got the nap going down towards the child's hips and legs, but you mustn't iron the plush side of cord, the pile side, because you will really, really crush the pile and change the colour of it a little bit. So you need to iron the back of cord, not the top. So when you're facing your interfacing, with the gluey side down and to match up the shape and use a press cloth or if you've got the woven interfacing and you're using the right temperature try and make sure that you're pressing because if you start dragging you'll start moving the interfacing into different places so try and press rather than drag. And anywhere there's a little bit poking out, you can cut that off if you feel the need, but it really doesn't matter because when you finish that edge, you will it will be within the seam or a finished edge. So the interfacings are prepared, it's time to attach some of the side seams. Okay, number three you're going to sew this front centre seam together. Now it's really important that you use the seam allowance given in the pattern because if you don't, when you come to put your interfacings in, you can see look, that seam needs to be the right width so that that piece of interfacing it's exactly round the shoulder tab and the neck. <clears throat> and the seam allowance is 1.5 centimetres or 5 eighths of an inch. So we're going to make sure that we set that up on the machine. If you're new to sewing, um, it's worth mentioning that you, it's not in the instructions, but you need to press every seam open. Remember, we're not trying to press this from the front because we don't want to crush the pile so we're going to open the seams out with our fingers just use a piece of cotton cloth and then we can press the seams and you can't do this at the end some people say oh, oh I'll line it at the end um, it's, it's no good at the end because you need this end to be perfectly flat before you attach the next piece and that's really going to affect your front finish right under the chin of the child you don't want to have a sort of pucker where you haven't pressed the seam out flat so all of these seams need to be pressed out as you go along and it's tricky if you're not in a designated sewing space where you can have the ironing board out but there are some smaller press tools on the Minerva website if you need to find something that sets you up with a smaller pressing area okay and you can see look that fabric changes color a little bit if the fabric's a bit hot and you can see why you don't want to press on the right side you can also use what's called a crush cloth um, which i'll list in the products below which is a cloth that um, is a little bit spongy so when you put it on top of cord it doesn't crush the pile so you could iron it from the right side it's good for velvet it's good for um, anything that's got some embroidery on it so that you don't crush the needlework in the embroidery that's within the fabric. And the same for the centre back seam. And we're 
going to press that as well. If you're new to sewing, you might need to put a few little clips in there to make the curve move around a little easier. You're going to clip it like that so that when you open it out, it doesn't pull there. That's a smooth seam. Okay, on to stage number four. Okay, number four, I'm going to sew up the side seams and I'm going to be using those notches. Look, there's one on the front piece, one on the back piece, and when we put them together, we want them to match up. If you're going to overlock, overlock it first because then you get both seams flat. If you overlock it together now, then you'll have to have your two pieces of fabric to one side or the other. So overlock now, sew up the side seams. Okay, side seams are sewn and they're pressed out. The edges are finished with overlocking, but if you're new to sewing, you don't necessarily need to do that. You can just use a zigzag stitch on the edge or you could use pink and shears when you cut out or you could turn this um, sleeve allowance, sleeve allowance, seam allowance down and do a running stitch along there. So there's a couple of different ways that you could finish that off. Zigzag's probably best because it would lie nice and flat. And now it's time to think about the facings. Number five, we're going to attach the facing pieces together. So we've got the right side up and now we're going to put them right sides together. And we're going to sew these side seams. They've got a notch in so that you know. And you must keep that 1.5 seam allowance on this facing as well because that's what seam allowance is on the side seam. So we want this side of the facing to fit into the side of the suit. And in stage five as well, we're going to finish this lower edge curve along the bottom. I'm going to overlock it because it's quick but you could um, zigzag it, you could turn it down by 6mm and sew a straight line, you could use a zigzag stitch, you could use pinking shears, so anything that neatens that lower edge. Number five is quite a long phase because it's where you carry on with the interfacings and now you're going to put them right sides together. You're going to match the front to the back and you're going to pin all the way round, matching the side seams, however way you finish them. Make sure this opens flat. I had a uh, pinking shears on that little facing bit and I'm going to keep matching the notches so there's underarm notches and then I'm going to keep moving up to the button tabs and that will be four times all the way around until everything's matched up and then we can sew on the sewing machine and there's a little bit of fabric handling to do because we've got quite a few curves there that need clipping and some pressing. So line up the facings with the main body piece. Okay, at the end of number six, as we've got um, everything pressed out, at the end of number six, it suggests um, holding down this facing because otherwise it's going to 
flap out. So the way that I like to use is to stitch in the ditch. So from the right side, I'm going to get my needle to go right inside or along that seam, forwards and back at the end, forwards and back at the end. If you don't think you can be that accurate, you can do a hand stitch on the inside that catches the seam allowance and the facing together. And either of those ways will stop the interfacing flapping out. You actually shouldn't be able to see it, but we can because we're looking at it. But it's um, stitched in the ditch there. And number seven on the instructions is to top stitch all the way around with a six mil seam allowance. There are a few design choices that you can make now. So you can add some buttons that you've already got. You can order two buttons. They're um, an 18 to 19 millimeter button. Um, I've used a 19 millimeter self covering button. And I'm going to show you how to do a self-covering button if you've not done one before. First thing you need to do for your self-covering button is to cut out a piece of fabric bigger than your circle. And you can always trim that down. And you're going to cut that out and then this is going to fold behind those little teeth. You can see those teeth there. Now we're going to put a little running hand running stitch all the way around the edge. Now this isn't necessary. I've covered a lot of buttons in my times. I, I can um, work the fabric around those teeth with my fingers or my fingernails. This technique just helps you to draw up the fabric into that centre point a little more evenly. So you make a running stitch and then you have a little handling thread there and you're going to put your button inside and then draw up fabric so that it comes all the way around and then you're going to use your fingers to work the fabric over the edge and you, if you've got a good nail on your thumb you can use that to hook underneath some of the teeth. We don't need that thread anymore it was just helping us a little bit. So on the reverse, you can start to see some of the teeth coming through where they've hooked the fabric. And on the right side, you get it quite smooth and you can work some of these wrinkles out by just smoothing them over the edges. <clears throat> OK, and then it's time to keep that secure by putting the back on. There's a little ridge and a trough. Ridge, trough, and the ridge goes down onto the button so you should be able to see a trough and you can snap it on and that holds the fabric in place. Time to make one more. Okay, we're on the last stretch. You've got um, a few final choices to make. We're working on this crotch seam. The pattern suggests using a snap tape. So that's a bit like what you get along the bottom of a duvet cover, but with the um, press studs closer together. I've, 
I've logged it in the products below but it comes in black and white and I didn't think either of those would look great on this pink fabric so um, you can add tape if you if your fabric um, contrasts or works with a black or a white tape you could just sew the crop seam up but then um, for a for a this is the large size so this might be a toddler who's can go to the toilet trained or if you want to keep that opening for nappy changing then um, we can use some plastic snaps I'm going to show you how to use those the plastic snaps have a little um, it's like a drawing pin a little pin bit that comes out the back and it's worth noting how long that is so what I've done on the crotch seam is just to turn under once the fabric along the crotch seam I was tempted to fold it uh, twice so that it looked nice on the inside but then I know that the thicker the fabric the more tricky it is for a cam snap to stay stuck in the fabric so I've just turned that fabric once I'm going to mark out where I want the snaps and then I'm going to show you how to use the snaps tool to put the uh, cam snaps into the fabric. I've marked out where I want my snaps. I've made sure that the front piece comes over the back piece so that the flap is on the back and the front is smooth. And I've marked out where the snaps will match up. First of all, I've just put the um, top pieces in and then there's a male and a female part that one's the back and one's the front so let me see if I can show you that it's tricky so one sticks out like that that's one half of the snap and one's got a recess that's this one it doesn't really matter which way you put them around as long as you have all the recesses on one side and all the protruded parts on another. And you have your little spike coming up through the fabric. And then on the, on the front edge, I'm going to have all of these protruding ones. And then I'm going to get my um, pliers and squeeze. And what it does is, that little spike that comes at the middle it squashes that little spike in the middle so this dish shape on the bottom of the pliers the crested head sits in this little spike at the top that squashes down the spike so the spike goes to the spike and when you squeeze it it squashes the spike inside and now that's attached. So I'm going to keep doing that all the way around with uh, protruding parts. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side, but with the recessed parts. These are called cam snaps and you will see them on the product list below. But obviously you're going to have to make um, your design and product choices. If you're making these um, dungarees in a denim, you might think, well, the black tape will work fine. So you could use the black tape. If you've already got an investment in a snap tool, you might think, oh, well, I'll just add another colour of snaps to my haberdashery. Or if you haven't got pliers and you're thinking, oh, well, that's a bit of an investment, I'll just sew it up. So there's lots of choices to be made, but the products that you need to find are listed below. My final design choice is to add a little iron-on motif. I've chosen a pink owl. I'm going to put that in the on the front. That's why I had the lighter coloured snaps to go with the light pink owl. And I've put the link to that one below. But obviously, there's hundreds and hundreds on the website. So um, if you're looking for something that's of interest to your family or you're going for a younger girl's look or an older girl's look, um, then there's lots and lots to choose from. I'll show you how to put one of these on. 
and then our item's finished. Now, because of the nature of pressing cord firmly or with a very hot iron from the right side, I'm going to position my owl on the front and then I'm going to flip it down. There's a risk that it will move, but I don't want it to. I'm being very gentle. And then I can press from this wrong side. Otherwise, I'm going to have really pressed out the cord around it. We're trying to melt the glue. <clears throat> the glue does um, fix over time, so it's not immediate. So you need to hold down and not steam. Really press to melt the glue. And then it will be ready in 30 minutes. That's the play suit finished. Unfortunately, I can't try it on, but you can see we've had a go at self covering buttons, applying an iron on motif, and making a crotch opening with cam snaps. You can see now why I didn't make a full sew along kit list because depending on what fabric you choose will depend on how you work the crotch opening. You could um, put a pocket here if you um, didn't find a motif that you liked. You might not use self cover buttons. So all the products that I've used are below, but it's up to you to mix and match and design your own play suit around some of the sewing techniques that I've shown today. This dungaree set would look great in a poplin, cotton poplin as a summer play suit. You could also go winter, so you could make it out of a, a, a canvas, um, denim, a thicker cord. Um, all of those things would make this fabric. It's not for stretch, it's for a woven fabric. The pattern is Simplicity 1566, corker of a baby wardrobe. I've made view D. You could make view D and add some little knee patches if you've got a crawling toddler. And I'm going to show some more of these views in some other sew alongs. So I hope that other beginners can learn some techniques while they're making a small item. Today's focus was cam snaps. So if you've not got those in your kit, you might like to have a look at those. You could join the Minerva Club and save a discount when you, on your orders for a whole year. And that might help you to invest in some new sewing kit and some new techniques that you've not tried before. Well, thanks for watching and happy sewing.